guys and welcome to episode 8 of Lena Needs podcast. Um, I'm Lena and I'm from Helsinki, Finland. And um, if you're a new viewer, thank you for checking me out. I hope you enjoy the podcast. And if you are a returning viewer, I'm very happy that you're here. And I just noticed that I have over 100 subscribers on YouTube and over 100 members um, on the Lena Needs Ravelry group. So as a thank you, since you all, each each one of you, uh, means so much to me, I'm really happy to have this connection with you, this way of um, of um, being in touch with the knitting community. Um, that I want to draw a pattern uh, as a thank you, and um, I'm going to be setting up a thread in the group, and there will be a prompt that will be something along the lines of what you wish to see on the podcast, what you like about the podcast, and of course what you don't like about the podcast. It's just um, a way of um, giving me some feedback. I'm gonna be sneaky that way. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, the winner will get to choose any pattern on Ravelry, um, say up to seven dollars. But I'll put the thread up and you'll see what, it, what it's about then. Um, yeah, and you can also find me on Instagram as Lina Nitz, and you're very welcome to follow me there. Um, I'm mainly posting about my, my knitting and other, other crafting, the same thing that I'm doing with the podcast. And um, yeah, last time I talked a lot and I forgot to mention a lot of things. First of all, I forgot to mention what I was wearing, which was um, this... Um, Three color cashmere cowl by Hohi Locatelli, which I'm sure most of you have seen and probably made. This was a big hit a while ago, and no surprise since it was a fun, fun thing to knit. So this is what I was wearing last episode. Um, all of the yarns are Lani Tumex Machina's basic sock, and um, I think it. It speaks volumes for their sock yarn base. Um, it's hard wearing. I have several pairs of socks from their yarn and, and they're holding up to wear really well. And But still it's, well it's not soft soft, but it's not scratchy so you can wear it next to, next to your skin as well as a scarf or shawl or a cowl like this. Um, the yarns that I used um, the colors. This one is Heartache and the purple one is uh, one of a kind and the black one is called Black Pearl. Yeah, I'm just checking I'm saying it, them correctly. Um, I'm. You probably noticed that I'm testing out a new camera. Um, I'm not sure if it is better or worse. It seems to be better in some aspects and worse in others. So please comment on that and uh, whether you'd like me to continue with this one or return to the one I had before. It seems that it focuses better, but then um, uh, doesn't uh, take movement. A focus on movement as well as the one before that and then something that I completely missed or forgot to say is that these socks are now um, written up as a free um, download on Ravelry it's I wouldn't say it's a pattern because there's only one size although I do give um, sort of instructions on where you where you can modify the pattern to fit your feet better but it, it's just a super simple vanilla uh, sock recipe I wrote it up um, just to ha have something uh, for myself and then I just realized that why not why not share it with um, with others and I've been really um, uh, delighted by the response that it's gotten. People people seem to, like, no one's made them yet, so I don't, don't know how, how good the pattern is or the recipe is, but um, yeah. So um, go check that out. If you need it, do give me feedback um, on the forum here, PM me, or, or on the uh, pattern page. 
as a comment. I'd love to hear that because um, it seems that I I am starting to have design ideas and I'm going to be writing more patterns this year. I hope. Um, I have a feeling that I will. So um, since that's a new area for me, any feedback on the subject is is uh, very welcome. As is all feedback. Um, yeah, the, so those I forgot to mention last time. The, the, the one that I'm wearing now is the shawl that you've seen as a work in progress and as a finished object. So this is my um, the other one shawl by Vera Valimäki with, um, with my simplified border. Instead of the fancy wavy twisted rib border, I just did a mesh lace one. So I just ran out of patience. I couldn't get it to look as nice as it should look. So this this is it, and the yarn that I used was Nitlap's Lairs uh, in in Noki and Hopea suit and silver. Um, about the knits that I wear, um, personally I enjoy uh, seeing and hearing what other podcasters are wearing. Um, I like to see. Um, garments or accessories that they've done um, prior to podcasting um, as a way of seeing um, sort of a longer history of, of their netting or making and also um, I enjoy seeing um, the w works that have been made during the podcasting career career sort of because um, it's it's quite different to just hold something up to the camera uh, versus seeing it worn. Um, the way I usually wear this is um, I use this as a, a scarf, so um, I just bunch it up and tie it around my, my neck like this. But for um, indoor wear, I think it's it's a bit too thick around the neck, and I'm sure I would not feel comfortable. But this way, worn this way inside, it just warms up the shoulders and and the your back nicely. So that's two ways I wear it. Um, yeah, finished objects. I only have one this week. Um, well, I think it's better than last week when I had none. <laughs> um, I finished the Mini Mochi Springy Ring Mittens by Kathy Campbell. And these were made out of um, Merino fingering by Hondo yarns, and um, last time I had one of them done and the other one on the needles, and I was really not happy with the thumbs. But oh my god, I love plugging. It just makes everything work. So when when I sewed this, I just gave the thumbs a really good tug, and sort of pretty much just arranged the the stitches in the fabric as I wanted it to be lengthen them and then make them sit a bit better on the uh, mitten and now I'm, I'm really happy with them so <clears throat> that takes me nicely to works in progress since I'm continuing to use that same yarn which is running low but it should be enough um, I mentioned that I wanted to do socks and this is the first one that I've done uh, these are for my son, yes. Um, the pattern is um, Melokulan Lapsa from this Finnish book. Um, Knits for Kids is basically the name. Um, it's by Ilona Korhonen and Jenny Österman. And Ilona Korhonen is actually the dyer behind this yarn, behind Handu. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this... Um, book is available or the patterns are available in English. Um, with this one it doesn't really matter since the sock, sock, there's nothing that special about the sock pattern but I just I, I went for it because I didn't want to be doing the math and also like I mentioned last time I'm really trying to make an effort to knit from the books that I have so so that's where this is from. Um, I followed the instructions from the, uh, this, these are toe-up socks, so I followed the instructions um, to where the striping begins. And then I just went with what I had, I, didn't, I don't, I'm using the um, leftover 
um, mini mini scale leftovers from the uh, the Mayor Days B Mary socks, and uh, so I don't have enough for thick stripes. So I chose to go with um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it seven? Yeah, seven, seven shorter stripes with um, just one row of the uh, main color there in between. And these seem to be, these seem to fit well. They have just a tiny bit of uh, extra on the toes, which is fine since the, my son's leg is growing all the time. And here's the second pair on the needles. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, it's where I started the um, gusset increases. So I'm using it as a simple measuring tool. When I reach that bit, I know I need to start increasing. I'm hoping to have this done by Wednesday when is when the when he goes ice skating the next time with his daycare care camp. And um, yeah, I talked about DPNs a couple of um, episodes ago, I think. And this is the two millimeter, I think that's size zero, Addis. And you can say it's all wonky, all of them are. So I'm definitely giving the, um, I love the Addy circulars and I will be talking about circulars in some other episode when I have um, sort of a pro proper slot for it. But um, yeah, the seeing two millimeters that I'm knitting the the um, Avia socks, the tiny bobbin knits uh, Christmas Eve cast on socks. It's just no way they would bend like this and these bend like crazy. So um, as much as I love Addy, Addy DPNs, this is the last project that I'll be working on because they just, they just bend. I'm, I, I probably could break one of these very easily. So not, not for me, maybe for someone else, but not for me. Yeah, so um, I'm thinking the yarn is enough, but it'll definitely be then used up. But I think it's pretty good that I got a hat, a mittens, and a pair of socks from one one skein of yarn. Um, yeah, um, I've been talking a bit, well, showing you the things that I'm working on for my son. So I just thought I'd quickly show you what he has what hand knits he has in his wardrobe at the moment. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about the yarn and, and so on. So um, I think all of these are in my Ravelry project pages where I have listed the yarn and, and so on. The first one is this and the yarn, this yarn is something that's very difficult to photograph and obviously it seems to capture on, even on video. It's not as busy as it looks, but it does have, it, it's, it's a variegated yarn that does have sort of creams and oranges, blues and, and very dark browns. But this is a, a vest. Uh, it was um, actually called, sorry, Hutsi by Sarah Gresbach, and it should have a hood. So it was a vest with a hood. But I didn't have enough yarn for the hood, plus I didn't really think my son would ever put the hood up with the vest. So I left that out. And then he has a sweater that I knit him a long time ago. This was a pattern from a Finnish magazine that I no longer subscribe to, or I don't think it even exists anymore. Um, a very simple striped sweater. Um, I wish I had paid more attention to my gauge because my son is really, really quite thin. So this, this is, um, this has always been too wide for him and he has a long back. So now it's starting to be too short. So it's, it hasn't seen that much use, sadly, um, cause I, as you can see, these are the only garments that he has, and I really should knit him a proper sweater. As for accessories, um, he has these mittens that I knit him last year. These are, I thought these were so cute. These are uh, little hedgehog mittens by Birch Hollow Cottage. Um, 
my son says these are mice, which is just fine. Um, I didn't have enough gray yarn to, to create the whole um, hedgehog body from it, so it's just the heads and the ears. Um, I don't know why mice would be brown, but um, if hedgehogs aren't, but he can call them white ones. And they even have cute little eyes. I hope they can, you can see them. So these were just a fun, cute knit. And then what he has, that's um, his starting to be too, his hands are starting to be too big for them, are these mitts. Um, I need the um, tiny old Tiny Old Knits uh, Catching Butterfly Mitts for myself and um, uh, my son, son really loved them and he loved the uh, butterflies in them so he asked if I could make him a pair so he chose the colors he said he wants green and red and me not having that much <laughs> bright red yarns went with the uh, sort of wine red wine color and the the green is a muted forest greeny type so um, I modified the pattern to make them smaller and I think they're just too darn cute that I'm going to keep them even though they not they won't fit him that much longer and then he has hats um, this is Citric by Alex Tinsley and my son his head is um, large for his age. I know it's um, <laughs> you probably have a really funny image of him, but yeah, he has a large head. So this is basically the pattern as written. So it's it should fit an adult. Um, I think I tried it on at one point, but as you can see from all the uh, bits of nature found in the hat, found in the hat, he he has worn this and likes it. Um, so yeah. He has a big head and I like slouchy hats on him, so that, that's one that he has. Um, then he has this, which is super cute. This is um, Choet uh, by Ekaterina Blanchard. Not really sure about any of the pronunciations there, but um, this was a fun knit and I've actually done a second one for a friend's daughter. Um, I think my son and I both like this hat a lot, but it's not the best shape for his head. I think I should have made the body a bit longer or something. It doesn't seem to cover his ears properly or it's too wide in the rim or something. But it's cute, so it's for the not so cold days. And then something that he has that he's soon going to outgrow if he hasn't already um, is this hat. And as I was um, taking out the, um, um, the things that he has, I realized that this is actually um, another pattern that I have designed. And this was um, some years ago. I just saw a photo of a similar hat or of a hat with um, clouds and raindrops. And I really liked it, but it was very expensive for a child's hat. So I just decided to um, you can see this one's been worn as well. Copy it and I knit it myself. Um, sadly, this was during the sort of Ravelry break that I had. Um, I have project listed before this and after this, um, but there was a year or so that I did not really uh, update my Ravelry pages. So I don't have this one there and I don't remember what yarn I used. But I'm thinking for next winter, I might just figure out the yarn and uh, the pattern from this, um, knit him a new one, and maybe even turn it into a pattern for everyone to access, <laughs> so to speak. But this has been a long time favorite of ours. As you can see, it's really, it's starting to get a bit fussy from all the Wear. So that's, you know, now I'm covered in, in all sorts of dry leaves and sand and whatever kids get in their clothes. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what he has. 
and it's not a lot. I feel quite. I should knit him more. I knit him when he was a baby, and then these accessories whenever he's knitted them. But I think I've just sort of felt like he's growing all the time, so I haven't really gotten into the sweater knitting thing. But now I. Especially now that I see how much he likes when I knit him something. Yeah, I think there's a sweater coming this winter. Maybe something not not really thick, something that he can wear during the spring on spring walks or something. I don't know, but I need to knit him more things. Mm. Yeah, so um, works in progress, that's where I was. Um, just quickly showing what I've been working on and I know that I haven't made a lot of progress on pretty much anything because I've been knitting on so many things. I should really slow down. Um, one of the projects that I've been working on is the um, Atwood Shawl by Hugh Loco and Nicole Clark. Which way does it go? Um, yeah, so I'm using Progress Grief Keepers. This is the one that I got from Andy from Andre's Units podcast. So this is where I was the last time. I showed this to you and I've added two more uh, repeats and I'm ov um, officially <laughs> into the large part of the shawl if I'd done a small one then from this pearl ridge I would have gone on to the lace, lace edging but now that I'm doing the large one um, I need to still do a few more repeats before getting to that and my first ball of yarn is qu getting quite small so I need to wind the other one to keep going and then I've been knitting on the chateau which is slowly but steadily progressing I just can't still can't work on this for long stretches of time so that progress keeper there which I got from Kirsten of wool and wine with my wool and wine yarns order um, is where I was last week so um it looks like a fair bit of progress, but it's really only like 20 rows or so, so not, not that much, but it's slow going. But I'll get there, I'll get there. And then there are the giant socks. So last time I showed you, I was done with the cuff and um, since then I've knit the heel flap and then down the gusset decreases and like I said this is the largest size for the cuff and it was just looking too big <laughs> so um I'm sorry things are falling down here um so um my plan was to go down the medium size for the foot part and that's what I did and luckily it was very very simple um, it turns out the large and medium size have the same number of um, instep is it instep or the top of the foot the pattern part same same amount of stitches on that one so all I needed to do was to get the sole stitch number sole, sole stitch count down which is what I did after or on the heel flap there was a you set up rows and then you started the rib for the heel flap and it's not even that visible really but I just on one row on both sides I just knit or purl two together to get into the rib pattern with the uh, correct amount of stitches for the for the medium size and once I've done that and done all the uh, gusset decreases I had my partner try these on again and it still fits <laughs> and um, when he put it on I almost fainted because um, it turns out I still have about five inches of, of the pattern or, or this foot part to do before I get to the toe decreases um, even he chuckled a bit when he put it on he was like okay so I'll get these socks sometimes in the winter so that's uh, the pressure of finishing them off me of course I'll knit them knit on them and start the second sock as well and I hope that they are finished before before Christmas uh, before summer 
definitely before next Christmas. Um, yeah. And I think the reason why this, um, cause I've been thinking about this a lot because it just puzzles me, but I think the reason for why this looks so much bigger than, than any other sock is that due to the pattern and the pattern and plus the yarn, which is the sort of, um, sturdier, rustic-y, it still has the lanolin in it, so it's not that soft, so it tends to hold its shape. Um, see me holding down here, is, it doesn't sort of flop that easily, it stays up. So I think that's why it looks so big, because it doesn't constrict, is it constrict? It doesn't, you know, it stays, stays sort of open without blocking. So I think that's the reason it looks too big. But yeah, making progress on this, um, you'll probably be seeing one, <laughs> one version of them in very many episodes to come before I finally finish them. And then the reason, well, one of the reasons that I don't have anything else finished beside those mittens is that I've been knitting on one, two, three, four um, existing uh, works in progress and I went ahead and started a new one. Um, just last time I said that my goal for this year is to sort of um, be sensible and think about what I cast on for. And then I saw um, the, uh, the Emiliana shawl pattern by Lisa Hannes, Hans um, of the Mali Hat Designs. And um, I saw it, I saw there was a cal for it, and I had these two yarns pulled up for some project that never happened, so I just took them and started knitting. And this is how much I've done on the shawl that I was not supposed to even have. This is um, Sweet Georgia's Tough, tough Loud Sock, I hope. Since it was pulled up, it didn't have uh, the band, the yarn band with it. And I looked through my Ravelry stash and that was the only one that sort of seemed to match. But this is really soft yarn, so if this is sock yarn, mm, yummy. Anyway, and the color of this is, um, I think it was Sands, uh, no, Tumbled Stone. So that's what I'm, I've also been knitting and uh, it calls for two colors, so the other color is this, sort of a really dark teal. And it's, um, sorry, Dye Dreams Luster Socks in Peacock. So I think these two will look rather nice together. Um, I have a few more rows to go before I add the second color, but not too much. And this is the first time that I got to use my um, carbons circulars, um, knitting this on 3.5 millimeter needles. And it doesn't say the US size. Um, I really like this. Um, a lot of people have said that they don't like the, uh, the sort of edge between the tip and the what they call shaft of the needle, but at least on these small size circulars, it doesn't bother me. I also got um, the Carbon's um, VPNs. Sorry, I'm my brain is really slow today. Um, there's a full set, but three of them are in a project that I can't show you yet. Um, and while I like the the warm feeling of these and the fact that these are not like other people have mentioned, these are not slipper. The stitches won't slip on these. They won't. It's not. They're not grippy, but they don't. The needles don't slip off on their own. Um, with these one, the joint between the uh, tip and the shaft really it, it sort of bothered me. So. I think DPN wise, I'll go with the Zings and the um, Haya Hayas. I've enjoyed using those the most. But I do like the sort of warm wooden feeling that these have. 
but the circulars, these I like. I think I need to try a pair. I would like to try the larger size to see if, if that makes a difference or smaller, but 3.5 at least I've enjoyed using these. Um, I think I have I have a loose gauge, like I said, I'm a loose knitter. So I think with the carbons, it, it's even looser than usual. So I really have to pay attention to pulling the yarn a bit tighter and not being that loose because I'm already down. I think the, the actual pattern called for four millimeter needles and these are 3.5 and it still looks a lot looser than the other I'm showing you the wrong side side of it than the other works in progress photos that I've seen in the uh, in the cowl thread but I don't care I like loose shawls and I think blocking will help with any tension issues well it won't make it lighter but it will make it look neater and um, if you follow my Instagram account, you know that I picked up my spindle. I have a drop spindle. This is a very, very, very basic one. Nothing fancy about this, but it works. Um, now that I've um, heard other people talk about spinning and write about it a bit more, um, Devon from the Tiny Paper Foxes has been really generous in sharing his knowledge and tips and answering all my questions and uh, so what I'm thinking of doing is getting a lighter spindle I think this is something you would call a medium weight spindle so I think I'll get a lighter one for spinning my singles and then use this one for plying them but anyway um, I've re I enjoyed picking it up and I definitely intend to go on and this is the fiber that I'm spinning Oh shoot, now I don't have the bag for it. Um, anyway, this is um, the co this is by Hilltop Cloud, which is a um, UK based uh, fiber company that I can highly recommend. And um, this is part of their Queen's sampler pack, which they no longer have. They don't produce these colors anymore. It was all of the six wipes of Henry VIII, and all of them had a color. And um, I got the sampler pack because I wanted to try them. All of them are slightly different bases as well. Now this one had, I think, merino, silk, and stellina. I don't know if, if it picks up the clear, but this is just awesome. No, it wasn't silk, it was milk. Yeah, and this is really soft and, and has a really nice sheen to it. And I have no idea why I don't have the um, the label with it. But that one um, is Jane Seymour. I've already spun up one of them and applied it. Sorry for the rustling now. Um, this is the um, Catherine Howard colorway. And this one was Merino Shetland Bamboo and Fire Star, which I think is some sort of a glitter. So this is um, this I spun this I think two years ago, year ago, a really long time ago. Anyway, um, each of these packs has um, well. I've written down, yeah, this was spun in April in 2014, so almost two years ago. Um, I've measured this one has about 60 yards and it weighs 80 grams. So what I'm hoping, of course, is to spin up all the six colors and then use them to knit a shawl. I think I'm going to be doing the Quaker shawl or something. I'll talk about it more when I start it. But first I need to spin all of them. So I'm doing Catherine Howard, um, just two plies by the way. And the rest of the colors, now this, this is going to rustle. These are in, um, still in their plastic bags that they came in. I don't know how well you can see the colors through the uh, plastic packaging. And this is Anne Boleyn, sort of red, red and hints of white and light brown there. 
and this one is Merino Shetland Soy Silk and Firestar. Then there is Catherine Parr, sort of orangey color, and this is Merino BFL Camel and Firestar. And then Catherine of Aragon, Merino Shetland Bamboo and Firestar. And Anna Cleves, Merino BFL Llama, Corydale and Firestar. So I thought this sampler pack um, would be a great way for me to, me as a new spinner, to get to know different fibers and how they work. Yeah, yeah so I think this, this one was um, Merino and Milk Fiber and, and the Firestar. A really lovely feel to them and these are quite easy to spin. Um, so Hilltop Cloud, definitely check them out. Um, I have a lot of braids and bats from from her and from other companies. So um, they run really, uh, Hilltop Cloud runs really good clubs. And um, um, yeah, <laughs> they have clubs that are, in, um, I think, really fairly priced. And of course, they sell um, they sell yarn. Uh, yarn. I should just stop talking. They sell fiber by the by the color, and and you can order as much as you want. Um, and they're sort of, I think one one while they have the queen colorways. They also had birds, and now they have something else. But just go go check them out. Um, if, especially if you are a Europe-based spinner. So the uh, price pricing is very good for us. So yeah, I will be ordering more from them definitely once I spin up what I, what I have already. Yeah, but now it's just basically me just learning to spin with a draw spindle. And it's, it's quite funny, I knew if I had a wheel I would spin a lot more because I just sort of have a feeling it's faster than drop spindling. But because I don't spin a lot, I can't justify buying a wheel. So it's just sort of a catch-22 there. But um, I'll try try and get more into spinning this year. Yeah, and then this time I do have stash acquisitions and all of, all of the stash is from Lanitium X Machina. And these have been ordered throughout December, at least this year and last year they did a fabulous um, advent calendar with different offers each day from the 1st to the 24th. So um, as I was, as I knew that I would be buying on more than just one day, I told, I have to say this so you don't think they don't ship fast. So uh, I told her to, to wait until after Christmas to make sure I was done <laughs> with shopping basically and um, and that's what she did and then we occasionally go to the same knitting group so we were waiting to see if we would both be there at the same time but I wasn't able to go there um, this month it's in the beginning of the month so um so finally we just decided to have her send them to me. So I'm just saying this so that you don't think that they don't ship their uh, ship orders um, effectively. Um, they have to, They have some that are dyed ready and ready to ship, which they ship right away, and even the dyed to order ones um, are dyed and shipped in a very decent time span. So just so you don't think it takes them a month to get stuff out. Plus, um, the holidays, of course, slowed down mail. And then when I got the card, it took me a few days to find the time to go to the post office. Since um, here in Finland, they don't leave packages um, to your door. If you're not at home and they try to bring them, um, you have to go to the post office to pick them up. And so it took me a few days to do that. Um, and what I got, I got so much, but this is um, 
No, it doesn't seem to have the tag. But this is a 150 gram skein of merino. And this one was a one of a kind colorway. And as well as this one, which is the same 150 grams of merino. I think four ply. Um, and these were a lot of the rings um, inspired. The first one is, um, they did have tags. Where did those tags go? But this was, this one was Palantir and this one was called Uruk Hai. And this is a really lovely mix of bright blues. And then this one, it, it really if you if you've seen the movie and you've seen the orchid they are dark they have the face paints on so this this really really looks like them i don't know if the camera will focus but it was really genius colorway this the, these were on offer on sale on one day and i picked this one and ever since i just ordered that one I get regretting not getting this one because I think it's just a seriously gorgeous gloomy colorway. So then luckily no one else seemed to pick it up and then on Christmas Eve when they had the store-wide discount code I snapped up the Orokai and I showed this to my partner and he was like yeah so what can I knit them knit off them for me he likes the Lord of the Rings really and he loves dark colors so I think he's hoping Urukai will be for him but I don't think so not this time for me he has yarn waiting there he actually bought me yarn that I could knit for him anyway then um, I wanted to try um, their glitter sock I I have um, one with silver but I've never actually had a glitter yarn with golden glitter not that I know of so this is what I wanted to try um, it doesn't say the colorway name now it looks too washed out so it's better keep it here and not bring it too close um, yeah but I, th I believe this is their colorway that they have in their repertoire at all times barley or something like that And then this one um, is TK weight sock yarn. It's called Hedgehog in the Fog, which is also a colorway that they have all the time, but they have not previously stocked uh, DK weight sto sock yarn all the time. So this is 75% merino and 25% nylon. I don't know that it looks sort of grayish there, but it is um, dark greens and sort of gray, grayish greens. And why do I want DK weight sock yarn? I live in Finland and it's winter. Seriously, at home I do need thick, thick socks. So I just wanted to try them, it feels really soft. And then this one is part of the club. They've had a club, I think, at least for two years now. First it was um, Firefly and now it's just um, all sort of fantasy and sci-fi themes, different every month. And I just cannot live without it. I don't think there's ever been a month where I've been disappointed with the color. And this, um, and I I think I order always the six month club and then I just switch the bases that I use. So this one is I think this is the December colorway because I changed the base for January. So this is still their basic sport. So it's sport weight sock yarn, 75, um, super was wool and 25 nylon. And the colorway is called Spirit Away Haku. So if you know the Studio Ghibli movies, I think this is just fantastic. Really is so beautiful. And then another treat that I got. I got a 10 pack uh, of minis and these this is um, they're gonna these are all colors that are going to be coming out this year and they are 
um, she's named the collection or the colorways as our urban jungle collection. So I don't have these, these didn't come with the individual color names. But they are all very, very pretty. And these minis will not be part of my beekeeper's quilt or my um, cozy memories blanket. But instead, I'm thinking I'll just order five more minis and um, then do the unicorn parallelogram um, by Stephen West. Um, the original one uses uh, the Madeline Toth unicorn tail minis, but these are basically the same. And um, um, the original one uses 20 minis, but I think it's, um, it's quite large, long, it has a long wingspan, and I'm not tall, so I think just having 15 will be enough for me. And um, I think this is a good representation of the, uh, the color aesthetics of Lani Tumex Machina. Um, they are colors, definitely and they are all different and they're all wonderful but they're not at your face bright and they all mix together very well so um, even though individual skeins you could pick up this is quite bright as turquoise or then this green sort of a poison poisonous green I don't know and then they have pinks like the heartache in the cowl that I showed you earlier but when you put them all together it's it's really n nice and cohesive so yeah that was my festival of wool pickery purchases part one so yeah I ordered quite a bit during December and now just coming down coming not down coming to me on the mail I have a slip for a package and I'm hoping to pick it up later this week and I have a feeling it's yarn. But anyway, um, I think I have blathered on quite long enough and I think this time I actually said everything that I was supposed to say. <laughs> so that's a, and that's a relief. And um, yeah, uh, before I say bye, I just want to quickly remind you that Finish It February is coming up in, in February which is actually in two weeks, is it really? Three weeks, two weeks, no, two weeks. So I'm starting about the uh, works in progress that you want to focus on. Some of you have already done that. Um, I have two and I think I'll speak about them next week. I won't go through the prices now, but there will be prices. And then another thing that's coming up uh, Melissa of the Spicy Homemaker podcast has been doing these uh, swapless mini swaps um, where you, well, you can go to her group and check it out, but it's done with Amy of Bohemia Fibers, where she custom dyes uh, skeins of color based on the photos that the uh, participants send her, and then she puts them into mini skeins to send to each one. And um, Melissa's um, uh, swaps have been very uh, successful and they're already all full so since I really love Amy and I love her yarn um, I asked her if uh, she would want to do one with my group as well uh, since Melissa was also um, encouraging others to do the same since she had no more spots left open so that's what I'm doing um, and Amy said it would be possible in the um, end of February, early May, early May, early March, so around that time span. But um, if you know you want in, you can start thinking about your photos. If you don't know yet what I'm talking about, even uh, go to um, Melissa's group. Uh, Amy has lots of information there, and Melissa as well. And Amy should be sending me, she said, she's, she's putting out together a sort of information package on these sort of mini swaps, mini scale swaps. And I'll post that, or she will post that on my group. But that's still 
uh, about a month away. But I just thought I'd mention it in case you felt um, you missed out on, on Melissa swaps, then you know that there's, there's more coming. And why not earlier? It's because Amy is busy dying here for the Melissa swap, so we don't want to have you guys waiting uh, for many weeks to get your skin. So that's why we'll do it when she has uh, time in her schedule. Okay, so that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Um, uh, please subscribe, please join the group, and please give me feedback, um, especially on if the new camera was better or worse. Um, yeah. See you next week. Bye.